It's down. They're still in. Yeah, she definitely is. <laughs> Chasing a female. And I think he's courting her. I was very honored and privileged to go speak at this event. Yeah, chick, 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 chicks. Chick, 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 chicks. Come on, let's go. Load up, right here. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, let's go. Right up here. Come on, you got it. Good girl. Yeah, you good girl. Hey, Maya. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Center Bison. I'm Dusty. Marissa is not with me this morning. She's uh, not feeling well, so she's hanging out at the house. I got Miss Maya with me. We just got through rolling out of Bella Hay to the Big Joe herd. It's quite a big herd now today i'm like golly biggest herd we've ever had couple of things that i've got to do one we got to start thinking about how i'm going to catch these calves because we had we've had some shenanigan gate shenanigans uh, with dunbar in the front and uh, bison getting loose on the ponderosa and calves escaping uh, we've got to catch these calves and start the weaning process. We've got three up there right now is the only ones I could catch, but we've got to get the rest. So we got to talk about how we're going to catch these guys. And I got a couple of ideas that Marissa and I are going to try to pull to catch some of these calves. These mamas are getting so big and I'm so excited because this calving season, it could start in April by the looks of some of these mamas are so big. Their bellies are getting so big in their third trimester of this pregnancy. What's exciting about this birthing season, this is gonna be our biggest calving season ever as being a bison rancher. With that being said, these mamas are getting big. So what I mean by our biggest is we've got 19 females. Jackie! Jackie's barking at something. Jackie! I think those cows live in the woods, but... We've got 19 two-year-old females. They're gonna be three this spring that are gonna be first-timers. You take that many, plus the original herd we had, which is about 15 or 16 females, and uh, you've got a, a lot right there. So you've got 34, 35 females that could possibly calf. We could have 30 plus calves for 2024, and I know you're just excited as much as Marissa and I are. And so we can't wait for that to happen and we hope it all goes well but speaking of calves look at this tank right here one of the biggest calves we've ever had as part of our operation this is a 351 bull and his mama is what i call the texas cow um she was about uh she's one of the biggest cows that we had she's one of the cows that we rescued kind of back in uh back in 2019 or back in 2000 21 when we got the ponderosa i went to texas and kind of rescued a, a herd that wasn't in very good shape uh, i ended up getting like i don't know a 15 or so and i sold some of the bulls that were in that group that we didn't need and then i had some calves in that group 
and then we had some mamas. And um, so in that group, this is the first, one of the first productions of the cow after a year or so um, of having them and getting them back to health. We've got some awesome calves out of those Texas mamas now. So that was a cool little story there, but he is a tank and a, he's, he's one that we're watching out for. He's special. So big, there's his mom right here. There's his mom. This is Texas 11 right here. Well, by the way, some of you may have asked, you were kind of worried about the two darts were left in that heifer that Marissa and I were darting for uh, some dewormer, basically or trying to get in them a quick way is by using the new dart. We did get all the darts off of except that one heifer. But some of you asked, did she lose them? Yes, she, the next day we came out here and both darts were out of that Canadian heifer. Why did they stick in longer than the other two? I don't know, I'm not sure exactly why uh, they did that, but it is what it is. It happens sometimes, I guess. Uh, maybe I didn't pump it up enough. On the rest of them, I pumped it up a little bit more to make it a little bit more powerful, because that is a pump new dart. You can get the 22 version uh, that powers it. But I did that, and um, the rest of them were powerful enough that it stuck to them for a, maybe a minute, and then it dropped them. So on that cow, I don't know why, Specifically, they stuck on both sides of her hip. But uh, the bad part about those darts is they're not biodegradable or anything. Um, so we do have to find them eventually, wherever they are. We should start spray painting them orange, I think. <laughs> like fluorescent orange. And Marissa and I talked about last year whenever we darted Dunbar. Uh, they did fall out and they're out here somewhere in the pasture. So uh, that little needle's maybe like less than a half an inch size. And so we just need to try to find it basically. Um, it may be hard. The grass is low right now, but in a couple months it'll start coming up and we'll have a hard time finding it. So some interesting and kind of some surprising behavior lately is we've got Big Joe right here that has been actually chasing a female and I think he's courting her. Got some footage of it. Uh, I've noticed this the past couple of days. He is courting what we call our grand champion female. And uh, we bought her back in 2019 at the Oklahoma Bison sale that was actually held in Sulphur here in my hometown. Um, and she was a grand champion heifer, which means she was the best heifer at that sale in 2019 or 2020. Whenever year that was, she was the number one heifer. And so we always call her grand champion. And she has comes from a good line of genetics being from the Quapaw Nation. We've got three Quapaw females here and the latest is the little one right here. This is actually what we who we call Quapaw. She had the latest little red dog um, here back in October. Kind of surprised there too as well. But Big Joe has been chasing her around and I bet she's close to him. Yep so she's right here behind me. So he just covered me up there. It's funny. Um, he stayed between, there she is right here. So 8,007, she's a beautiful cow. And um, yeah, he's courting her, so she must be in heat. And uh, she had a calf, oh, I have to go back and look at my notes. She had a calf, she had a late born calf, basically. And he's actually, I think he's still out here with her. So I noticed that he needs to be weaned. So Big Joe's been kicking him away from her which is pretty natural and that's what happens in the wild, I was, um, I'm assuming. And so they kick them off and so he can breed her. So usually they, these females come in heat about like a month or two after they have a calf. Quapaw had her baby in January, so I'd say within February, end of February or March, she'll be coming in heat, which is kind of <laughs> when bison should start calving. But in her case, because she had one early or late, whatever you want to call it, Quapaw heifer. She'll come in heat maybe March or so, get pregnant, and now we're looking at another nine, ten months, long as a woman, and then she'll be having a calf again. So her timing is a little bit off like some of them, but typically bison have babies in April and May, and down here in the south I feel like we have them in May and June typically. We want them to have babies before it gets too hot. That's, the, that's what is important to us. Here's one of our originals that we start with, Bell Star. 
Lost her calf in June, I believe. She's big and pregnant. Hey, Bill. Hey, Maya. Hey, Maya. So uh, something that uh, I recently did, I wanted to catch you guys up on. I went up to South Dakota and I went to a, an event, an annual event. It's actually a show and sale and a conference, basically. It's a uh, performance sale. It's called the Dakota Territories Bison Association and it's DTBA and they hold it every year in Rapid City, South Dakota. And it's a conference that they put on of the Dakota Territory, so North and South Dakota combined together, and they put on a conference, and then they also put on a sale. And this is just not any sale, this is a kind of a select group of females and males coming from some really good producers in around in the South Dakota area. Anybody can really come to it. Um, as, long as, you're, as long as you're a member of it, I'm pretty sure you can bring your animals to it. These guys are weighed from the very beginning when they're weaned and when they, if some of them go on feed or if they go on grass, they keep up with their weights. It's a performance-based sell. It's kind of what you would maybe call the prestigious sell of the bison industry, maybe. I was very honored and privileged to go speak at this event and what an awesome time. So many good people, great connections. It's a great time to socialize, get to know people, learn a lot of new things. Heard um, South Dakota State talk about their research with bison. They do a lot of great things. Heard uh, people talk about fiber, um, using the added value products such as tallow for soap. I mean, there's all kinds of great things. Got some really good connections while I was there. And um, I was able to talk about what Marissa and I do, what inspired us, talked about the, you know, the viewership and how I try to promote the bison industry and try to teach people just in our small little world here of, of small little bison ranch of what we do and how we try to change the bison industry and promote these awesome animals that are out here on our pasture. That's something that I got to do. I'm very fortunate. The girls didn't get to go with me, unfortunately, but um, I had a good time, met lots of good people, and hung out with lots of good friends. That's what's, the relationships there, it's one big family. There's, that's what's great about the bison industry. So if you're ever interested in raising bison, and you kind of want to get your foot in the door or something like that, you can reach out to me, you can email me, Hello, 1500. Um, and you can reach out to me and I can help you kind of get started and point in the right direction. Especially if you're in South Dakota, North Dakota. It doesn't matter if you're in Wyoming or uh, in the east part of the US or the southern part of the US, we can get you pointed in the right direction. We need more bison producers. We need more bison. I'm not doing it all myself. There's a bunch of us out there and we need more of you, right? We want to try to grow the numbers of the bison and help the industry. And so I hope that I do that in these videos. I hope that do that in our message that um, Marissa and I are trying to send to people and share our experiences and our stories of raising the American bison. Ponds are full. It's a good sign. Bison are running. Something special is coming back in stock. Buy some friends. If you have not tried our snack sticks, you will love these. We got a new style of snack sticks about a month ago. We put them out during Christmas and they flew off the shelf. And we, we had to get more made as soon as possible. But right here, guys, stay tuned. We're gonna drop these again pretty soon. And we'll let you know when we get them back in stock. Right here, we've got original natural flavor, and then we have our honey or sweet barbecue flavor in our snack sticks. These are one ounce snack sticks, straight from the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch and Operation, locally made in Southern Oklahoma. Right here, guys, we'll keep you updated. You can get these in 10 packs with any merchandise or anything like that. You can check it all out at crosstimbersbison.com. We'll keep you updated on these. Don't forget our drink. First load, a little messy. All right, so <laughs> I have to show y'all, my buddy Marshall and I here recently had to haul some hay off of my brother-in-law's place, uh, Daniel from Arms Family Homestead. We got some hay bailed off of uh, him uh, late summer and it was time for us to go get it. So 
Uh, but I had my buddy, he's got the big truck and the big uh, hay trailer. And I had him, um, we went to try to get some work done and try to uh, haul some hay. And a two hour task turned into an all day endeavor. And I mean endeavor, challenge of just trying to haul some hay. We had like maybe 50 bills, that's it. Here's what Marshall and I went through. What a day. First load, a little messy. That's all right, had to load from the side. 20 bells headed to the Lynch place. This hay met is done. This hay met is next. First load. Marshall's got it. He's got to make this big turn. Looks like he's got it. You got it? Oh. Like in the video, you can see you're coming over there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's a good thing. I... All right. See, there's your white dog. Hey. Yeah, it was a good thing uh, she saw us first. But... Both of them go at the same time? Yeah. What are you doing, Fifi? This little lube. And that's it. 20 bells. I don't know if Daniel needs any, but we're going to go in this hay meadow now and start there. Get another load of 20. We have to put some weight on the back. Marshall and I got it strapped down. These are 50 horsepower tractors. The weight ratio is not great. So we got to have our bell in the back so it don't get a little awkward in the front. Weight gets a little sketchy in the front if you just put one bell on it and nothing on the back. So this helps balance it out and move around a lot safer. Because if you don't, the weight on these tractors with one big heavy bell in the front, you got a thousand pounds up there. It can get a little shifty and a little sketchy, especially when you go to lift them up and move them. Here we go, round two. T-post. Oh, ran into an issue. We are sank, sank, sank. Marshall's gonna go ahead and uh, let the stop real quick. Maybe we can get out, but he is sank. Sinker in the sink. Uh, problem is, water more than likely on these terraces here. And, uh, yep. <laughs> Oh boy. Not moving a whole lot. Tractor may have to work. Well, Marshall's got, Marshall's gonna drive the tractor. And uh, I'm driving my truck. I'm eating a snack on the way. He stuck. Tractor couldn't get it out. So uh, we're gonna tag team it here with uh, my truck and Daniel's tractor. See if we can get him unstuck. Trying to find ways to get her undone. Wish us luck. Just lift you up. You want me to back up or just move you over? Well, I'm in park right now. I'll oh, <laughs> I'll just move you, you over. Want me to get in and try to drive what do you, do you think that's safer or just worth it? Well, the only thing I was thinking is if you could just move you over. I mean, right. which way? I don't care. Yeah, it may not do it. Oh, let me just get in. I'll get in and just drive forward. Okay. Let's try that. I'm probably not going to hit the gas much because I don't want to run it. I'll just <laughs> let you kind of... Okay. We got her cranked up off the ground. I don't know if you guys can see the tire and the rut, but we 
we've got a, quite a cluster here. We've got Daniel skid steer, tractor, all of them. Alright, so now we're gonna hook up to the back of the truck since we got the trailer off. We just lifted off with the skid steer. Now we're going to uh, unhook to the back of the truck. We're gonna lift the truck up and try to scoot it over because it's in some major, major ruts right now. All right, so we got his truck lifted up with the skid steer, and now we're gonna pull it out since we got the we got the dual tires picked up and out of the rut. I'm moving the trailer because it's muddier, basically, if we go forward. But if we can pull him out backwards, I think we can do it because it's not as muddy and soggy behind the truck, which is where the trailer was. But we're pulling this trailer out of the way so we can pull him out with Daniel Skids here. Man, talking about ranching it. But I'm getting this sucker way out of the way. So now we're gonna go try to pull Marshall out this way. We're gonna pull him out since we got his tires out of the rut, the duels. stuff. Alright, so we're going to try to back up, pull him out. Success. I think we got him out. <laughs> Holy crap, it's a skid steer. Alright, we got it. Holy smokes! We got it. Three hours later, we didn't give up. Woo! Took a little little while, but the skid steer came through thankful for Daniel skid steer. His is a lot co closer than uh, than mine is. Uh, so mine's at the cabins and Daniel's is here. So now we're back to work, hopefully, and don't get stuck again. We're going to get Marshall backed up here and hook him up. Which way? Oh, down? My bad. All right, so we're back in action now. Marshall, get the <laughs> trailer hooked back up, and uh, we'll reload our stack here. Uh, hopefully, let's go take a look at this muddy, muddy mess. Poor Daniel. I told him, I said, we're going to have to fill in a bunch of your ruts. bad boys. What a mess. Marshall's helping on the other tractor. 
making this go by faster. I busted two hay bales trying to do a double fork. Didn't work out for me. Busted a couple of bales trying to double fork them. Busted them. <sighs> Been a rough evening. Been a rough day. Well, we got all the hay hauled. It finally got it all hauled. Thanks to Marshall, I appreciate all his help, and man, what a day we had. And then, <laughs> the day didn't get any better, let's just say that. We had some of our bison get through a cross fence and tore it up a little bit. Not sure what happened, but anyway, so we, as soon as we got the hay hauled, we headed to the Ponderosa to patch up some fence, and uh, that was basically how we ended our day. Um, sometimes you just never know when you're ranching it. Thank you guys for watching us. Thanks, Marshall, for the help, buddy. Tractor may have to work.